Hi guys, and welcome back to- HOLY CRAP! Yeah, this is the first level where basically the game just starts showing you no mercy. It started throwing some of those little hopping Igors at me first thing, and then a knight, and immediately the next screen. Yeah. This is the point where if you haven't died yet, you're definitely gonna start dying now. But luckily, you've got Sypha with you, and hopefully she's gonna help you out quite a bit. This next part shows the real beauty of, of the Ice Spell. Um, I already have the Ice Spell with me, but incidentally you can pick it up from, I believe, the third or fourth candle on the screen. So, watch what I do here. I change into Sypha, and I use my Ice Spell, you know, casually, just because I'm trying to knock out some bad guys. And I discover a hidden little gem of the Ice Spell in this area, which is... Wow, you can freeze the entire stream. Beautiful. So at this point, Sypha just kind of ice skates over the the water and is able to deftly dodge the enemies that way. Very convenient. Again, another great example of how the ice spell just saves you tons of time. This level I love too because of the music, by the way. This song is called Stream, I presume because there is a big stream running through this level. Uh, it is really a nice peppy little song. Gives you the energy to keep going even after this level keeps kicking your ass over and over and over again. By the way, I know I keep gushing about Sypha, but the reason for that is that the first time I played this game, I took the Alucard path, and I got really frustrated because the Alucard path is just long and boring, and it's difficult in boring ways that make you waste a lot of time. It really left a sour taste in my mouth. Then I played the Sypha path, and that redeemed the game for me. The main problem with the Alucard path is that he's just a terrible character. Yeah, it's time to start laying the hate on Alucard. Alright, here we go. So first off, I bet his design. He's really tall. He's about as tall compared to Trevor as Trevor is to Grant, which means he has a larger hitbox. He's as tall as Trevor when he ducks. So when you're Alucard, you might as well just paint a big bullseye on your chest, because what you are is you are just a big meat shield, just waiting for enemy pellets to come raining down on you. It's really a terrible disadvantage. On top of that, his weapon is really subpar. Uh, as opposed to Sypha and Grant, his is the only weapon other than Trevor's that you have to upgrade in the game. So imagine this, if you're playing with Trevor and Alucard, you have to upgrade two weapons at the same time. Think about how many hearts you miss doing that. And then on top of that, the weapon's not even that powerful. It's modeled after the final boss of Castlevania 1, obviously Dracula, his dad. Because if you didn't know already, if you haven't played Symphony of the Night, Alucard is Dracula's son. He's a half-human, half-vampire hybrid, or a dompier. Anyway, so his weapon is three fireballs shot forward and then at, at 45 degree angles up and down. And when you start off with the weak versions, it only goes straight forward or down. So you might be naively thinking, oh that sounds like a great weapon, that sounds like the spread gun in Contra. But no, it's not that good. Because the fact is that each fireball that you shoot out, each one is incredibly weak. So really, unless you walk right up to the, a boss, for instance, and you just pummel them with all three of your, your fireballs, i.e. you shoot them point blank, you're not going to do much damage. So in terms of game design, it's a great weapon for an enemy to have. You know, that's what you want. You want to have an interesting attack that goes off in several directions that the, the player has to dodge around. But as an attack for a playable character, it's just not very useful. So this boss fight, for instance, this is a great example of where a precision attack, as opposed to a distributed attack, does you a lot more good. Uh, and this is one of those bosses, I, th I think I mentioned with the Frankenstein boss, with that, with that guy you basically just want to walk up to him and wail on him. This is an example of one of those bosses in Castlevania 3 where you kind of want to do the opposite. What you want to do here is you just want to play chicken. So the reason that, you know, just don't be a hero kid. Like the reason I'm not jumping around and trying to get in as many hits up against this guy as I can is because, yeah, that water is right there. And that water is going to kill you as soon as your feet touch it. So, yeah, swallow your pride and just walk back and forth on this one central pillar where you can avoid their, their fire shots pretty easily. And just get in a little pot shot whenever you can. It may get boring, like at this point, holy crap, at this point I think the battle goes on for like another 30 seconds just because I'm waiting for this guy to appear in exactly the right spot. And, yeah, I'm starting to do a little dance, yeah. And then when he finally does, that clink means that I screwed it up, I got excited. Got excited and uh, lost my nerve. So here I am going back into the little dance. Yeah, that's right. You break it down, Sypha. So yeah, there's no glory in this, but at least you don't die. As Jack Kerouac said before it became the trite name for a punk band, pretty girls make graves.
And Saifa is all too aware of that, being a girl from the graveyard herself. So yeah, she's not too keen to go back in there at this point, I don't think. So that's the end of this level. In the next one, we're going to go into the final level before Dracula's castle. I'll see you guys then.